Okay, well, let's get back into this RCA VCR, the VMT3, was it a 95, 385? I can't remember the model number at the moment. Uh, let's flip it around so you can get a look at it here. Uh, yeah, VMT395. And you guys seem to like the uh, real-time videos, so I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, keep doing it. Definitely uh, allows me to shoot more videos and post more videos without having to spend a lot of time editing. Come on. I think that's the one ground screw that goes into the power supply that grounds this whole metal bottom here. Uh, hopefully I'm in frame and in focus. And, oh yeah, I remember this one. Yeah, it, uh, well, yeah, it had problems. So I have ordered and received uh, a set of belts. Well, from eBay, basically. And so um, I ordered for the 285, which takes the same belt kit. Uh, let's make sure we have autofocus on so we can actually focus in on this. It takes the same belts as the 395, but uh, for the 395, they were almost $60. And I found this one for the 285. If you go and uh, research uh, PRB belts, projector recorder belts, there is a cross reference that you can download. And it gives you a ton of information about the width, uh, the size of the belt, things like that, the cross section. So I ended up ordering these belts for this customer. And so I haven't even taken them out of the package yet. I think we may have one extra belt in here. So let's just go ahead and it's already getting stuck to the bottom of this just by laying it on there. So there is uh, what looks like the belt for the uh, take up. And then this is going to be the main capstan belt. These two belts are going to be the loading belts over here. And then I think there, like I said, there's an extra one. This one actually goes in between these two idler pulleys. So it, it drives an inner, well, it's all stuck under there. It drives an intermediate pulley to this black one right there and I'm thinking this one might be the extra one I'm not sure we'll figure it out once we get deeper into this unit so I do have a stack of rubber gloves that I will obviously be needing on this unit because yeah that's that's going to be a nightmare it's going to make a lot of mess I'm just wondering would it be easier just to go ahead and pull the capstan motor out? It does unplug. I think it unplugs. Yeah, it does unplug right there. And it might be easier to clean this uh, completely out of the unit, which is what I might actually do. So let's see if I can get these on without tearing them. There the cheap Harbor Freight gloves that you can actually get again after the pandemic where you couldn't get gloves. So let's go ahead and start with that. And I remember doing these under warranty when they were brand new. So there is the capstan motor long before the days of direct drive capstan motors. And you can see how much of the belt is just wadded up on that thing. Oh, maybe I pushed in a bit too far. And uh, like I said on the previous video, it was so bad that it actually spilled belt over to this post right here, which they've conveniently cut off. So, yeah, um, I'm going to push this back out of the way. We'll put that 
down there and somewhere in here I may or may not have a roll of paper towels. Uh, I'm going to pause this for one moment and go get a roll of paper towels so I can lay it out down here. One moment, please. Okay, and I'm back with a roll of, well, you can't really see them, Kirkland paper towels that I have not opened. These are virgin. And they are open. So I'm just going to go ahead. Oh, I know I'm saying that again. I'm just going to go ahead. Yes, I am. Duh, obviously. Just going to go ahead and put a couple down here. I'll try to keep it in frame. I can't guarantee anything. And we'll grab a couple little screwdrivers. I'm just going to try to scrape a lot of this off. It's a brass pulley. It's not plastic, it's not going to hurt it. Oh, sorry, out of frame. I should zoom out just a little bit so you can see. There we go. Oh, that's going to be a nightmare to clean. Wow. Once we get it just a little bit better I'll go ahead and start uh, hitting it with the magic sauce the magical solution acetone I'm just trying to I'm trying to get the big chunks right now and it is working I can actually see look at that I can see the brass portion of it let's go ahead and switch over to a smaller screwdriver. It's so sticky. Look, look at the gloves already. I think the acetone will help clean that very nicely. And I'm, I'm just hoping that I'm not getting anything down under the frequency generator because uh, these two wires right here the blue and the yellow are a frequency generator so this is actually a magnet it's kind of hard to see but that's a magnet down in there these two wires actually go to the motor the commutator and the brushes and then this is a frequency generator that feeds back to the servo and I uh, hope I can make this work. Look, oh, look at that, how nasty that has become. So next we're just gonna make another mess. Magical Solution Acetone. Pick it up at any hardware store, Walmart, which is, I think, where I got this. Actually, uh, this is just a can I use. I, I buy them in the gallon size. And then an acid brush. And it's going to be kind of hard to see, but I'm just going to go ahead and... Well, I did it again. I'm so sorry. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead. This will be the first layer of belt goo removal. And look how good that acetone cleans that off. Remember how black that was? I may have to hit it with some brake clean once we're all done. So I'm going to try to hold this. I know it's hard to see because of the weird angle. Oh, it's so nasty. It's going everywhere. I may have to do a little more digging out. Let me go ahead and clean the screwdriver tip out. Oh. I 
hope I don't have to take the motor completely apart. But acetone does do a very good job, and unless you're looking for uh, aesthetics, it's going to make a mess. Like I said, um, we can hit it with a can of brake clean. I've got some brake clean out in the garage from the time I pulled the motor out of the Mountaineer. And that'll that'll polish off the shine. And my glove is it's getting sticky from the acetone. Yeah. Can't even get it off the screwdriver, it's so bad now. I may have to change out this acetone soon. Yeah, that is much, much better. We'll go ahead and hit it with the acid brush again. Hopefully it's kind of in focus. You can see what's going on. And hopefully the audio is still working. I have the zoomed view up on here right now, so I can't see the the VU meters, the volume unit indicators on the on-screen display. Wow, that's looking a lot better. Uh, cotton swabs. There are the cotton swabs. So yeah, I will go over this again once I get the majority of the nastiness off of here. And I think I'll probably change the gloves again as well. Uh, someday, I'll do a video on this really nice Sony ES tape deck that I picked up at a thrift store. Dolby B, Dolby C, and Dolby S. I think I paid either 5 or $10 for it. Really nice ES series tape deck. That needs the exact same thing done to it. <laughs> okay, let's try to clean these gloves off just a little bit. Like I said, I may just have to get a new, new pair. Oh, that's better. Acetone is definitely making them sticky, though. Okay, I'm going to go dump out this acetone and fill it up and put some new paper towels down. And, uh, yeah. One moment, please. Okay, new paper towel installed. A little bit of acetone left in the bottom of the Pyrex dish. Once all is said and done, I'll hit it with some fresh, clean acetone. I just want to try to clean this up as best as I can. It's funny, it's not taking off the... Uh, thread lock that they spilled right there because they thread lock these pulleys onto the motor with this green thread lock you can see right there that's not bad at all that's looking a lot better Okay, what was that? 10 minutes of just cleaning one pulley?
Well, like I said, if you like long videos, this one might be the winner so far. Might be close to an hour. I can tell it's getting clean because my acid brush is shedding. And I don't think it's going to do anything, but I'll wipe off the sticker that tells me it's a Sankyo motor. Thank you very much. Sankyo. Okay, I'm going to call that good enough. I like that. And hopefully you can see it. I did not adjust the exposure. I should have adjusted the exposure. Uh, once I get this back in the unit, uh, like I said, I will hit this with some more acetone. Just to make sure I've got everything. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and I'll clean up a little bit. And then we'll reinstall this motor. And then uh, get to the rest of this unit. Okay, so whatever you do, don't tell the wife I use one of the brand new Pyrex dishes. Actually, I think they're uh, they're Anchor Hawking dishes. I just bought these like a week ago because we were getting low. I like to have extra Pyrex dishes. And so I want to go ahead and I want to remove this for the capstan motor. But before I do that, I need to flip this over. And there's normally a little washer right there that I need to, I guess I don't need to bring it up. But I'm going to. Right there. And I think just based on the amount of dirt that's on that capstan shaft, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, the washer actually scraped off some of it, but there is a lot of residue, as you can see right there in the center of your screen. I want to clean that off because I'm going to pull the capstan out of the unit completely and I don't want that to get in the brass bushing right there so we'll try to set it where you might see something and I'll put that on manual focus and so I'm just going to get a paper towel and the alleged Pyrex fish that is anchor hawking and I just want to go ahead and try to scrub that. And if I can get my hand underneath it here, and it's probably not in focus, I'm going to rotate the flywheel around while I'm scrubbing it to get off that residue. And I'm sorry that it is in manual focus and I have moved the unit. Let me just turn off manual. That's how much has come off so far. There we go. Now you can see it better. I may have to take a uh, knife. I don't want to pull that through the bushing at all. Hard to get that bottom area right there. Let 
I'm trying to scrape it with my fingernail. As I rotate it and push it off the screen. Okay, I'm going to say that's going to be good enough. So I'm going to flip this back over. And then, whoa, obviously zoom out just a bit. And I'll put it back in manual focus. We'll go ahead and clean that. And I think I've got some uh, white lithium grease. We'll put a dot of that on there. Take that nasty belt, it's pre-stretched. Now this should lift out very gently. Oh, perfect. Now we can actually clean this thing up. It's got a bit of scoring on the top bushing right there. I can catch my fingernail in it. If this were a uh, I Do Cars episode, I would not reuse this camshaft with that scoring on it, definitely. Pretty happy with that. Next, I need some more acetone. In the alleged Pyrex dish. Now I'm gonna get a cotton swab. Hopefully I can do this with gloves on. I'm gonna remove a good portion of the cotton. These are actual Q-tip branded swabs, by the way. I'm gonna rotate it and push it through both sets of bushings. There's an upper set and a lower set. And yeah, that's what it got off. There's the second pass, much better. And we'll flip this over. And we'll do a third pass from the top. All right, fresh clean acetone on there. Next to the first one. Yeah, it's through the second one. I know you can't see anything right now. And that's what we got off on the third pass. So pretty happy with that. Controller seems to be in good shape. Don't see any cracks or anything. We'll probably pull that off because this one does have a screw, so we can actually take that screw out and then uh, apply a droplet of oil into the actual bearing. These use bearings, they're not bushings. 
This is back when they made good stuff. So I want to remove all contaminants. That includes this washer. And of course I dropped it. Way to go. I think I need a new glove or two or three. <laughs> Yeah. Obviously not chemically rated gloves. Okay. But you can see it's spotless now. And then uh, there's another one on here. I'll go ahead and take that off and clean it as well. Nice and shiny. Nice and shiny, as Rain Man Ray would say. <clears throat> okay, some light machine oil right here. Uh, people ask me what I use. Uh, this is the Zoom Spout Oiler. And I don't know if you can make out anything on this or not, but this is what I use to fill my light machine oil. It was uh, white or clear oil when I got it. It's a few years old now and I just filled this little spout oiler or pinpoint oiler as you may call it. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm doing it again. I'm so sorry. Add some oil there. We'll add some oil there. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now look at that. Now I'm going to hold the flywheel. Well, I flip this over, you can see a droplet of oil on that. And this little plastic washer basically just keeps the oil from migrating up the capstan shaft. And yes, I will clean this off. There we go. That's going to keep it from falling out too, so I don't have to hold it up anymore while I do the rest of the work. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and pull, whoops, sorry, this, I don't think I'll pull the whole mechanism out. I'll probably just pull these rings off right here and take the individual gears off of the shafts. And at this point, as the saying goes, the gloves are off. So there's a very small split in this washer and if you hold it down, you can pull this little clip off. Make sure you set it aside so you don't lose it. That shaft will come off. We need to clean that with some acetone. Get that belt goo off of there. Come on, baby, why you gotta be like that? There we go. That one's off too. This is the clutch assembly that allows it to slip in the playback or low torque mode. So this, uh, it's a felt clutch and we don't wanna lose that. 
little washer which goes underneath there is oh that one's actually captured so we're good on that one and since we're down here I think I will pull this one off just so we can clean it and lube it because it looks absolutely terrible if I can find the split There it is. Try to hold it down. And then there it's off. And no extra washer on the back side of this one. And for these, I'm just going to go ahead and I did it again. Doggone it. Gonna wipe the shafts off. And then we'll add some extra oil. Oh, that's a recess. Okay, pretty happy with that. So we'll just go ahead and submerge this completely in acetone. I don't have anything small enough to clean the inside of that, so I'm hoping just soaking in acetone will clean the center of that off. And I'm kind of leery about doing this one and soaking it because I don't want to get that felt clutch soaked with acetone. You can actually take these apart. They're just pressed together. Let's see if I can get it apart peacefully. <sighs> nope, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to risk it. I do not have any spares for this unit. So I'm going to have to call that one good. And then we need to dig the belt crud out of that as well and then dig the belt crud out of that one this one I can submerge because it doesn't have the clutch and we need to clean all that stuff out of there okay push that back out of the way just for the heck of it I'll bring a small paper towel out right here and I'm gonna put more gloves on for this because it's once you get this on your hands you really can't get it off again. All right, gloves are on. I'll just fold. This is a used one, so I don't really care about it. It's even got glove remnants on it there. And just try to get the majority of this gooey belt off of here. Hopefully the audio is still with us here. Batteries have not died yet. I did not ex uh, adjust the exposure, so Hopefully it's not too uh, underexposed because of the amount of white. I have the exposure in auto at this point. But I'm going to say I'm happy with the results so far.
All right, I think my glove has a split in it already. I can feel the acetone. I have dry, cracked hands, and it definitely uh, it finds the cracks. Yeah, I think this acid brush is toast. Yeah, look at that. I'm trying to get it down in the hole to clean it a little bit better. fingernail into the groove right there. I definitely underquoted this one. I only quoted, I think, one hour of labor. And I think we're going to be at an hour and a half or two hours. But it's what it is. I'm just going to go ahead with the one hour that I quoted. Last thing about acetone, it evaporates so quickly. Once again, uh, don't tell my wife. I use the new dishes. But it'll be okay. Oh, doggone it. Oh. Okay, that looks good. So I'm going to take a cotton swab and I'm going to pinch the ends of it to make a little V groove. And then that way we can actually clean down into the groove of the pulley. Is it a pulley or a shiv? Or shiv? You tell me. Oh, shoot. There's belt stuck in there. Doggone it. Uh, new paper towel. God, I didn't think it was this bad. But I think it's only that one area, like 180 degrees or less on the pulley. We'll try to just get it out with acid. And I, like I said, I don't want to submerge this. in acetone because of the felt clutch. Okay. Wow, there's a lot of residue. It's getting better though. It's definitely getting better. This will probably be the last pass. Isn't that a password program? Last pass? 
I've heard Leo Laporte talk about that years ago. The last password you'll ever need. Well, I'm not giving everybody my password info, so yeah. That's not bad. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Time for reassembly. At least on that part. We still got to do the loading motor belts next. Okay. Let's get this back in a kind of position you can actually see. And then I gotta try to remember where everything went. Okay, and as I recall, there was no washer on the bottom of this one because it might be kind of hard to see, but the gear has a little stepped space. So we'll go ahead and add some fresh oil here. And we'll go ahead and add a droplet inside. And unfortunately, off camera, I did wipe this off. And we'll see if it's going to snap. Is that the right one? Maybe not. I well, know one of these has to be the one. Stuck to my finger now. There we go. That fits very nicely. Just going to add a drop down here because this is the clutch mechanism that you see it's kind of hard to see i'll tip this up a little bit but this is the high torque low torque mode so in one mode it allows the clutch to slip and in the other mode like for fast forward and rewind it has no slippage whatsoever as it raises and lowers and so that's why i kind of raised it up and added a, a droplet of oil to lubricate that shaft down below. And that goes on there. And whoops, I know this one had the washer under it. So that washer goes there. That goes on just like that. That one goes on there. Snap that ring on, good. And then this is a big retaining ring does help if you have fingernails. Okay, I like that, very nice. So right now it's in the clutch mode, and then when this engages like that, and then this is in the high torque mode. So it actually has like a little transmission in it. So I just need to put the belts on this. We need to go ahead and clean all the goo off of this loading assembly, which this one's going to be tough because I don't want to pull the whole loading gear out of this unit. There we go. I don't want to have to pull this whole loading gear because it requires a little bit of alignment to get the pegs just right because uh, this thing rides in tracks on the loading gear. There's several of them that move different items into different places depending upon how it's loaded. So we'll have to do this the manual way. Time for some new gloves because it's going to get nasty once again. One moment, please. Okay, I've got some gloves on. I'll just try to dig some of this out. 
capture it in the paper towel. So this little lever right here and this spring is called a wrap spring clutch and it only allows it, see how it moves freely in that direction, but it catches in that direction. And when this thing is in the fast forward mode, this little lever actually, I don't know if I can move it. No, I can't move it. It's locked. But when you're in the fast forward mode, it allows this to slip in that direction or rewind, I'm sorry, fast forward or rewind. And then when it gets to the end of the tape, these things come around and it does not allow it to slip in this direction, only in that direction. So when this lever comes out, it loads up to where it needs to be. When it gets to the end of the tape, this comes along and it slaps that little lever right there, pushes it down, and it immediately engages the brakes to stop the tape because this thing's well hauling butt at a pretty good clip and you don't have a lot of time to react and when it gets to the end of the tape it needs to stop immediately and the loading motor really doesn't have enough time to physically move to a different location so it uses like I said it's called a wrap spring clutch that only allows it to move in one direction pretty cool technology if you think that's cool, look up Cy Cyclotal Gearbox. It is really trippy how those things operate. This doesn't have one. I, I deal with Cyclotal Gearboxes in my day job at my manufacturing plant that I work at. Well, that came out very nice. Very happy with the results on that pulley. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. And, shoot, I'm going to have to sacrifice some of this belt goo. To pull this washer out. That... I don't remember where this came from. I don't I don't think it goes over the capstan shaft, no. Huh. Maybe a spare when they made the machine, it just has been laying there the whole time. No, it didn't come from this. I may have to review the video to see if I dropped it somewhere. But anyhow, nevertheless. This pulley is ready to go. We need to go ahead and unplug that connector from the loading motor. We can remove that single screw that holds the loading motor into place. And this is held in with one little tab on the side right there. And then we can go ahead and service this mess. Wow, okay. Yeah, definitely underquoted this thing. But like I said, when I give the customer an estimate, I just stick with the estimate I gave them. Even if I lose time on this, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So yeah, I need to find out where that came from. I mean, like I said, I may have to review the video. Clean off some more goo. Hopefully it's in. There it is. Back centered in the frame. And this one, I think we can just hit with some cotton swabs and acetone.
Yeah, that one's got a defect in it. So it's really strange, hopefully you're still with me. Um, when I worked in Southern California, back in the early 90s, we got a lot of VCRs in with this belt gooiness problem. And, uh, oh, sorry if it slid off frame. I think it had a lot to do with the contaminants in the air the smog because I'm from Northern California where I am right now where I was well not born but raised been living up here since the early 70s and when I moved down there I would be amazed that VCRs were coming in that were only two and three years old that had gooey belts in them and we only saw them up in northern california on units that were probably in the eight to ten year old range which is pretty strange another technician i was friends with that has since passed unfortunately attributed that to the smog so like I said, if you're still with me and you have any thoughts on that subject, let me know. Kind of curious about that. There's still just a little tiny bit in that groove, but I don't know if I can get it all the way out. I'm pretty happy with that get the residue off and once again we'll take the gloves off and do a final bottom side cleaning of this mechanism and then reinstall the belts okay I did pause the video momentarily to go ahead and check back in the footage to see where that washer came from and as far as I can tell where's that oil there it is I want to go ahead and lube that loading motor up just a little bit. Uh, it's been there the whole time. I'll just go ahead and put a droplet on here to get down in that bushing. It will migrate over time. Okay, so. So now we can go ahead and put the first loading belt on, the loading motor. But before I do that, I'm going to prep the belts as you've seen me do many, many times before. So I'm gonna start by just cleaning this contamination out of the bowl. And then uh, we'll add some fresh acetone.
Just going to clean any contaminants off the belt first. A little bit came off. No, I don't think these are new old stock. I think these are new, new stock that somebody just assembled. That might be the wrong belt. Feels very good, a lot of grip. So one of the things I normally do after I put the belt on is I'm just gonna go ahead and just give it one more wipe just to get any contaminants off of the belt. Oh yeah, that thing's got a load of grip, just tons. You can see the belt almost peels off before it begins to slip. That's perfect. So we'll drag this back out here where you can see it again. And we'll get one of these other belts. And we'll very gingerly slide it in between here. Get another cotton swab. Clean any possible contaminants off of both sides of that belt. Not clean the outside, just the contact points. Oh, it's got just a ton of grip. Do not forget to plug the loading motor back in. There we go. This is the intermediate belt for the take up. This one's a little bit harder to do. It's got to actually slide under this gear. And if I can find my little screwdriver. We can just give it a bit of encouragement. Mm, too much. And it came out of the pulley. Wonderful.
unfortunately, there's really not much of a way I can clean that one, but I'll try. If I can get right. No, come on, baby. Why you got to be like that? Can't really get to the inside of it. That's the problem. Yeah, I think that'll work. There we go. It may have oil on it because I see oil on the top side of this pulley. I'll just wipe it off a little bit. Oh yeah, that thing's got a ton of grip also. Very good. Uh, next, capstan motor needs to go back in. Okay, let's, let's see, I need to do the actual capstan belt first. Go ahead and wipe it off real quick. Not say I didn't have gloves on. Have an injury. Belt injury. You can see some of the crud that comes off of that. I like that. Absolute perfection. Well, I can't find my white lithium grease, so I'm just going to add a single drop of oil right here. If it'll ever... There it goes. Single droplet. Should be perfectly fine. on it. Okay, I think we're done on the bottom. I didn't have that on screen, but everything looks good. Everything turns nice and freely. So yeah, 
I think we are... I don't know, the belt's riding down for some reason. Probably just me. There we go. Now it's centered. Okay, much better. Just me pushing down on it, all it was. Okay, next, uh, do a topside cleaning very quickly. Like I said, I, I reviewed the video and that washer had been stuck in there from the beginning. So I think it got dropped when they manufactured this machine and it just stayed there. pull the pinch roller off it's pretty glazed but I think with a bit of acetone and some scrubbing we can bring it back to life so I'll push that back out of the way once again I'm gonna grab a new paper towel I'm gonna fold it a couple of times and I need some fresh acetone in my bowl One moment, please. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and dip the paper towel and just give this thing a quick scrub. We'll probably get some of it off, but not all of it. This is, well, literally decades old. Yeah, really not much is coming off at all. It's just going to be the way it is, unfortunately. Okay. And we'll go ahead. Add a droplet of oil down here to this bearing. It's an actual roller bearing that's pressed into place. A little bit on the bottom. A little bit on the top. And I just want to wipe off that capstan shaft because I know it has oily residue on it. And I just don't want that contaminating the tape. Okay, I think that's good. Put that back into place. Hopefully it's focused. I have on manual focus. And there's back in auto. And we'll put it back in manual now that it's found its focus. Okay, I'm happy with that once again. And I think this extra belt was a counter belt. And it is a counter belt. Uh, oh, shoot. There's crud in that pulley. Doggone it. Oh, this is the gift that keeps on giving like the Jelly of the Month Club. Clark, that's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. That it is, Edward. That it is. So I'm wondering now, is it going to be easier for me to go ahead and pull the mechanism out of this unit because I need to clean this. This actually provides just a little bit of tension when you're in rewind so the tape doesn't randomly spool up and create slack. Oh man. Well, let's try to do it without pulling the mechanism out. And this is not a split washer, it just needs to come off. And it won't come off. All aboard the struggle bus. There, I think I got it. Yes. Oh, and I dropped it. Doggone it.
All right, one moment. I got to find this thing. Well, we're going to go ahead and pull the mechanism out. Or the, uh, the carriage. The cassette loading carriage. So... Luckily, there's no timing involved on this unit because it is gear driven. It's been probably 20 years since I pulled one of these things out. And. Okay, there it's out. I don't see the washer landing up there anywhere. And I don't see the washer anywhere. All right, one moment while I find this thing. Well, I'm not quite sure where it went, but I turned the machine upside down and I kind of banged it on the table for a moment and it fell out, so we're good. I don't have any spares on these guys. Hopefully I don't lose this one at the same time. All right, don't pop off, don't pop off, and I got it. Okay, so, yeah. Oh, doggone it, I touched it. Why'd I touch it? Holy crap. Okay, let's clean this off. So we'll kind of do the same thing. I don't have gloves. I'm out. <laughs> out of gloves. It would probably be okay without the belt. But when you rewind the tape, it causes slack in it. And it may... I don't think these have really a good search function in reverse it's only I think this is a three head unit as I recall but I think this will be okay Definitely have to wash my hands in acetone when all is said and done here. This is just the first pass, just to get the big stuff off. Usually by the third or fourth pass, it's nice and clean. Looking much better. I'm pretty happy with that. We'll do one more pass on this gear. I just can't get down into that groove. That's the only problem. 
Okay, I'm good with that. Get all these dirty cotton swabs out of here. Paper towel, go bye bye. And since I'm here, but what are you doing, cat? No, no, I don't want you in there. That is not for you. Out. Both of you guys, out. Sorry about the cat, cat interruption. I'll add a little bit of oil to the shaft. There we go. And the same thing here, just because we have it off. There's the magnet right there for the Hall Effect sensor, which lives right there. So these do not use an optical real rotation sensor. And the washer is still there, very good. So this has a magnetic Hall Effect sensor. Now that this is back in place, We'll give it another quick wipe down. So yeah, this is normally the stuff you don't get to see. Because I used to finish with a like complete presentation video. Now let's see if I can make this fly again. That'd be nice. It'd be helpful if they put split rings on these, but they didn't. Okay, happy with that. There we go. Okay, belt and paper towel. Give it a couple folds, dip it in some acetone. Give it a quick wipe down and we shall install the belt. And look at that, it's self-centered, how nice. Okay, so um, to get this mechanism in, I had to go ahead and remove, zoom out. So there was a screw here and a couple screws in the back and then these plastic tabs so that I could lift the circuit board up and move it very gingerly out of the way. And we'll see if this cooperates. It had a little bit of interference coming out. And we'll see if I can get it in without having to pull the front. Uh, if I can just, yeah, there we go. If I can get that to clear, I think we're going to be good. And the tab, it's got a couple tabs that go in in the front of the unit right here. And then my head's probably gonna get in the way. Just so I can put this back into place. And it does have a single ground screw. Look at that, an actual dew sensor right there. Remember back in the day when you had a VCR and you brought it from a cold place to a warm space and it said do on the display. So it was actually heating up the mechanism. I think, I think that's why they put this regulator transistor right there to dissipate heat into the mechanism. Okay. 
back into place. I'm happy with that. So I haven't done a tape path cleaning, but I'm not going to do it until I make sure everything works. So I think we're at the point where we can go ahead and fire this thing up and just see what it's going to do. I'm just going to put a tape in there that I don't really care about. We'll get the cord disconnected back here. I'll get it plugged into the Variac, which is isolated. People are like, you need to have an isolated Variac. And we'll hit the power button. And the clock does light up. That's a good sign. So now I just need to grab a tape that I really don't care about. If it's going to eat it, it's going to eat it. I've already digitized this tape. Something on, I think, the Travel Channel. Ooh, that's a good sign. It loaded and it set the tape. These don't auto-load, not like the new VCRs. They don't have a full tape load for Fast Forward and Rewind. So we'll hit play. Everybody cross whatever you have. And it looks like it might be working. It's taking up the tape. It's not eating the tape. So I'll get the capture device set up real quick. Uh, people have asked me, what is your capture device? This is the Cloner Alliance Pro box, I believe is the name of it. Cloner Alliance Pro. There's the remote for it. Yes, Cloner Alliance Box Pro. I'm sorry. So, I'll flip this around just a little bit. Video out. Right channel out. Left channel out. And I hear sound on my TV, so let me just turn the volume down here. And we'll hit record in three, two, one, capture. And it shows that it is recording. And I actually have a picture on the screen. Isn't that something? Now this does not have auto tracking. It has manual tracking. So I'm gonna move the tracking back and forth and look at that it is actually working okay so this is a three head VCR which means it has three video heads two for normal playback and it has an extra head for trick play is what RCA called this so when you pause this it's supposed to give you basically noise free pause and it has a slow tracking adjustment, so I'll go ahead and hit release pause. I'll move the slow tracking control. And look at that, perfectly still picture. This is back before four head VCRs existed. Back into play, move the slow tracking slightly. And look at that, it has a perfect still. Now it's not actually giving you an interlaced video is giving you a it's it, well it's hard to describe it's scanning the same field twice but it, it works great so fast forward search that's working reverse search there's the big one and it is working perfectly this is a six hour tape Let's go ahead and stop this. And remember, that's not a full loading system. When you stop it, it eject, it unloads the tape every time. <clears throat> so we'll eject it. Perfect. So you can tell it's a three head because it has a single uh, set screw right there for one of the heads. And then on this side, it has two set screws to adjust the uh, height of the two heads. Uh, don't mess with that unless you know what you're doing. Uh, let's find an S SP tape somewhere. Okay, there is an SP tape. And we'll see if it plays SP. This doesn't have SP heads. Everything is done with a 
Uh, 38 micron, I believe, is what they use for SLP. The newer VCRs had a 19 micron head. Yep. And uh, yeah, so we're, I'm, I'm turning the tracking right now. And this kind of uh, checks the tape path alignment as I roll the tracking and I start to get noise in it. If the noise, it's pretty good. It covers basically the whole screen at once. It's off just a little bit. I'm not really concerned about that. Now, I don't think it's going to give me a good still picture in SP. It's not bad. It is not bad. Let's uh, go ahead and turn the slow tracking. A little bit, and I'll pause it again. That is not too terribly bad for a three-head, 38-micron head VCR. Still moving the slow tracking a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't have a slow button on it. If it had a slow button, I think it might be actually better. And uh, it is playing. The Dolby is on. Let's go ahead and take this tape out because I don't want to get a content match. And uh, we'll just put this SLP tape back in. I want to make sure the wrap spring clutch is working acceptably. So I don't know why I press play. Uh, we'll stop it. And what I want to do is hit rewind. And then when I press stop, it should snap to a stop instantly. Stop. Oh, that was good. Well, I'm pretty happy with this repair on the RCA uh, VMT395, I believe the model was. It's working great. The first tool, the bomb Just need a belt replacement. I will go ahead and clean this. I'm not going to bore you with that because you've seen me clean a bunch of them. I'll go ahead and uh, clean the upper cylinder, the lower cylinder, and the heads themselves. Uh, probably with a piece of paper because people like really uh, freak out and, uh, about the comments about using cotton swabs on the video heads. But I'm going to say that we have a solid fix on this unit. I just want to thank everybody for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I do appreciate that you appreciate the longer videos. So this one's probably going to be an hour or so long. And I hope you stick with it to the end. Remember, you can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job, and I do these repairs in my spare time. And since the accident with my daughter and son-in-law, it's been so hectic. I'm trying to squeeze things in as I can, and I'm just starting to get caught up. Uh, my daughter's able to drive. My son-in-law technically can't, but he is. Yeah, don't tell anybody. But yeah, things are working. Oh, one thing I wanted to do is I want to, uh, I need to turn up the sound so I can actually hear it. And so we have the Dolby on right now. So I know this was not recorded with Dolby, so I'm going to turn the Dolby off. So that's Dolby off. And that is the Dolby on. So you should hear a pretty good reduction in the high frequency. So that's on. And that's off. Now keep in mind, this is an SLP tape. So the audio, respo the audio response on this thing is only good for about 3,000 hertz, maybe 5,000 at the most. Now on an SP tape, I think they claimed that the audio response was good up to about 8,000 hertz, which isn't that good, but it's what it was for the time it was made in the mid-80s. Once again, I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, uh, contact me on Gmail. Uh, please don't contact me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Uh, I really respond to those things, and as of the accident, I really haven't had time. I really do appreciate your comments, your views, your support uh, over the time, uh, the do donations that you gave to my daughter's GoFundMe page. 
It's really helping him out right now because my son-in-law cannot work. He was the sole supporter for this family, and uh, he's out of work for probably another couple of months. So all the donations you guys have made, very, very much appreciated. I just want to give a sincere thank you to everyone who's donated to the GoFundMe. I really, really appreciate it. Remember, with your help, you we can we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Uh, normally, on an edited video, I'd edit out my mistakes, but this is as it is. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Bye-bye.